So now I'm going to tell you about the sodium-potassium pump, what it does and why it is essential. And in order to illustrate this to you, I'm going to take you way, way, way back to our original lectures where we looked at a system that's perfect, a system that's only permeable to potassium, this system. And if the cell were only permeable to potassium and had a concentration difference where the inside of the cell was more concentrated than the outside, it would establish the potassium equilibrium potential, where the inside is so negative that for each potassium driven out of the cell by its concentration force, an equal number would be attracted back into the cell by the electrical forces, where you get one in, one out, one in, one in, one out, there would be no net change in potassium. That is, the cell would neither gain potassium nor it would lose potassium. It would be in equilibrium, and it would stay that way ad infinitum so long as nothing else changed. One in, one out. No net gain, no net loss. But remember, real cells are not perfectly ideal, but have leakage. In this case, the leakage of sodium. And thus, the cells are not at equilibrium, but rather reach a steady state at the resting membrane potential, whereby you get an influx of sodium in, which reduces the negativity on the inside of the cell just slightly, allowing potassium to leave. The efflux of potassium tries to restore the EK, but you get an influx of sodium in, which reduces the negativity just slightly, and this goes on and on and on whereby you get an influx of sodium and an efflux of potassium. But notice that the cell is constantly gaining sodium ions and losing potassium ions. The concentration gradients are running down. After a period of time, the concentrations of potassium on the inside and the outside of the cell would be equal, as would the concentrations of sodium the battery would run down. How do you prevent that? Well, the sodium-potassium pump comes to the rescue. The sodium-potassium pump is powered by ATP, and it acts to continuously reestablish the concentration gradients by pumping sodium out of the cell and potassium back into the cell. In this sense, it acts like the generator in your car that continuously keeps the car battery charged. Right. The pump takes potassium and sodium from regions of low concentration and pumps them into regions where they are highly concentrated. Thus, the pump works against their concentration gradients, which is why the pump requires energy. Thus, the pump acts to maintain the concentration gradients that run down due to the constant influx of sodium and the efflux of potassium. The pump is powered by ATP and takes lots of energy because it transfers ions from areas of low to areas of high concentration. Indeed, it accounts for about 40% of the total energy expenditure of the brain. The pump is a bit more complex than illustrated here. The exchange of sodium for potassium is not one for one, but actually three sodiums for two potassiums. The exact ratio really isn't important for our purposes, but the following movie illustrates the role of ATP and the three for two exchange. The sodium-potassium pump is an active transport mechanism. Three sodium ions bind to the protein channel, and an ATP provides the energy to change the shape of the channel that in turn drives the ions through the channel. One phosphate group from the ATP remains bound with the channel. The sodium ions are released on the other side of the membrane outside of the cell, and the new shape of the channel has a high affinity for potassium ions, and two of these ions now bind to the channel. This binding again causes a change in the shape of the protein channel, and this conformational change releases the phosphate group on the cytoplasm side. This release allows the channel to revert to its original shape, and as a result, 
the potassium ions are released inside the cell. In its original shape, the channel has a high affinity for sodium ions, and when these ions bind again, they initiate another cycle. The important characteristic of this pump is that both sodium and potassium ions are moving from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration. That is to say, each ion is moving against its concentration gradient. This type of movement can only be achieved by the constant expenditure of ATP energy.